Hi everyone, let's get right into the reading. So I do channel multiple energy groups on here, so this may or may not resonate with you. Only take it if it resonates. Let's see what's going on. Three of Pentacles, King of Swords, Page of Wands, Death. Hmm. Ten of Cups. Tell me more about this energy. Judgment. The Hierophant. Nine of Cups. Strength. Nine of Pentacles. I'm seeing this as someone who's who's trying to do something, but they feel like they have to do it alone. Like they're almost... We have the Seven of Cups. Why the Seven of Cups? Give me just a minute here to tune into this energy. Hold on. Seven of Cups, the Seven of Wands, the Sun. Okay. So what I'm seeing here is there's someone that's trying to better themselves, but they're not accepting help, it seems like. It's like this Three of Pentacles is about building something together, like as a team. Then we have the King of Swords. The King of Swords is very logical. He can be very strict. He can be kind of set in his ways at times. And you've got the Page of Wands and you've got the Death card. So it's like this person wants to get out of this immature energy. They want a transformation. But it feels like they're going about things a certain way. Like they want a Ten of Cups with somebody. They want, this is like true love, home, happiness. Like they're seeing lifelong potential with somebody here. And they know there has to be a transformation. They know that, you know, their immaturity, being a page, it's not going to work. They have to step up if they want this person. But it just feels like they're going about things a certain way. It's like they're it's like they're really working on themselves to present some kind of offer here. They like they're focused on this. They're going towards this goal. They want this with this person. But it's like they're doing things a certain way. It's it's like they're being very stubborn about how they go about it. Let's look more into this. So we've got the judgment, the hierophant, the nine of cups. With the hierophant here. This could be like tr tradition, society, social regulations. I kind of feel like they're making a judgment call to, you know, the higher font can be, it can be a positive card, but it can also be like a my way or the highway kind of card. Like, cause it does talk about like social institutions and organizations and even like organized religion. So it's almost like this person's making a judgment call, um, to do things a very traditional way or to do things a specific way. It's like they're not really... How do I explain this? Let's see. Like, I feel like they're working on themselves. I feel like they are. So one positive thing about this is I feel like this person is finally starting to get in touch with themselves. They are finally starting to listen to their own intuition. They are starting to, um, you know, not listen so much to what society is telling them, to what people are telling them. They're starting to listen to themselves. But it's almost, it's almost like this person goes from like one extreme to the other where they're lacking a balance, where I feel like this person, maybe in the past, this person was too impressionable. It's like if people, if there were rumors about your, your relationship or if people gossiped about you, if third parties didn't like you, they were very quick to assume the worst. They were very quick to listen to other people's negative opinions about, about them, about the relationship, like anything that confirmed their insecurities, they 
they listened to that. They got caught up in that illusion. And so now I feel like this person is trying not to do that anymore. They're trying to really kind of detach from people and hear their own inner voice. The issue I feel here is that like, so they are on the right track. Like I do want to say that they are finally getting on the right track. It is a really positive thing that they're stepping away from, you know, toxic people. They're, they're ending connections with toxic people. They're not, they're not letting those people get in their head so much anymore. They're seeing through that. Any third party illusions they are starting to finally see through that. They're standing their ground. Any illusions here, it's like they're standing their ground and they have clarity here with the sun. Because there's people, there might have been like jealous third parties, could be jealous family, friends, uh, could also be because we got a reading where I was, I was talking about how, you know, this person is insecure. So sometimes they'll just kind of tell people the worst about you or about the connection. That way it confirms their insecurities. You know what I mean? Like they'll, they'll say, oh, like, like they'll, um, they'll nitpick what they tell people kind of energy. But either way, I'm, I'm getting a positive energy here where it's like they are standing up for this connection. They're, you know, they're not letting people get in their head. So it's really positive overall. But let's look more into this because it just feels like they still, like they're getting there. They are on the right track. Um, they've taken the first step, which is a really good thing. The first step is just, you know, cutting toxic people out and really connecting with themselves again. I feel like this person's ego is so big though, that it's almost still blocking their intuition. So it's, it's like they're, you know, they're, like I said, they're getting there, but they still have that one last block to get through. It's like, they've gotten through that block of, of other toxic people trying to separate you guys, negative opinions. Um, they're finally listening to themselves, but that second final, you know, major block that they have to get through is now that they've conquered, you know, other people, they have to now conquer themselves. They have to now conquer their own ego because it just feels like they're trying to come towards you. They're trying to make things right, but it's just like they're doing it in a very stubborn way. Tell me more about this. They got some sort of clarity, maybe in meditation or in like a meditative state, maybe even in a dream state. They had some sort of truth or clarity that came that came out. Um, they realized something and so they're moving forward. Why the Eight of Swords though? The Lovers. Two of Cups. Justice. Three of Wands. They know it would be karmic justice for them to be left waiting like they left you, waiting for them to be left out in the cold and abandoned like they left you out in the cold. So that's why they're afraid. It's like they're wanting to come forward, but they're almost afraid that it's just like a like a game or a, a, a test that they're going to fail or something like that. Like they come forward and they're like, they're kind of in their head about it. They're like, well, is this just almost like some of them might think that you're just trying to get them to come forward so that you can reject them and have all the power. Um, but I don't think that's the case. I'm not feeling like that. I'm feeling more like that's in their head. Um, I mean, as long as they come forward and they're really offering you, you know, like they're expressing feelings, they're making an effort, they're showing you how they feel, they're they're letting you know that you are really important to them, then I feel like you are going to be open to it. But yeah, they are having some anxiety about coming forward just with this Eight of Swords energy here. They're kind of in their head about it, like, I feel like they had an epiphany, some kind of clarity, and they're like, okay, I need to move forward. But then they kind of started overthinking a little bit. And they're like, it's like they're trying to come forward, but they're trying to to plan it all out. And I feel like it kind of goes hand in hand with the last reading that we were doing, where it's like, if they plan it all out, you're going to see right through that. You don't want planned. You want a leap of faith. You want something genuine. You want to know that they're going to fight for you. You want genuine love, vulnerability, authenticity from them. You know, it was kind of like what we were talking about before um, in that last one or two readings ago where I was like, you know, you them taking leap of faith and sending you like a drunk text where they just pour their emotions out is going to turn you on so much more than some kind of planned out text. But um, but yeah, it's it's almost like they're they're kind of battling with their spirit guides a little bit. They're like, are you like like they're they're thinking about taking the leap of faith, but they're like, is this. Like, are you guys going to catch me when I take this leap of faith? Like, is this, 
is this real? Like I've been wrong before. They're kind of going back to their past too, to like past relationships. And they're like, well, I've been, I've been really wrong before. Like I've, I've gone through a lot. Like, are, you know, is this really, if I really open myself up and take the soup of faith, is it really going to pan out for me? Is it really going to go well? Yeah, if they want it, they have to walk away from, from those limiting mentalities. If they want something with the Queen or King of Cups, if they want to heal this connection, they have to take that leap of faith and, and walk away from those limiting mentalities for sure. But anyway, we got into a lot of that energy the other day. So let's get it more into the um let's tune into the stubborn energy that I'm feeling. Cause it's like, it's like, yeah, they're they're I, I feel like they are working on themselves, like they are wanting to come forward. And they are separating themselves from toxic people finally. But again, they just, they have that final block that they have to get through, which is themselves. They're their own worst enemy. Their ego is that, that last block that they have to get through because it's almost like they're, um, they need to learn the, in, the difference between their ego and their intuition. Because I feel like this person's quick to believe the worst. So it's like, if they, if they have like a nightmare or if they have, um, like a limiting belief or a fear that comes from, you know, past failed relationships, this person is very quick to be like, oh, that's my intuition. But if this person does, if, if they're being stubborn, if they're being set in their ways, they're, they're, it's like, They're, it's like they need to they need to learn the difference between soul and and ego between their intuition and just past experience and and you know limiting mentalities that might be blocking them tell me more about this knight of swords the fool Yeah, they got some information that um that some of you might be you, you're either open to new love or you found new love. What's hidden is that they're behind the scenes slowly working on this, working on giving you this offer, but they're just taking too long. Yeah, they're juggling too many different mentalities. Which is going to end up in the Three of Swords for them because they're taking too long. You don't, I think what this person doesn't understand is that you don't really need them to be perfect. Some of them are like, it, it's like perfectionism is a form of self-sabotage. You have to, and people get caught up on that, on their healing journey too, where they start, they start focusing on healing so much that they forget to even live their own life. They forget to go out and live and have fun. They just, they feel like they always have to wait. They're always pushing life away from them in a way you know what I mean like I have to keep healing I have to do this I have to be perfect before I can go out and have fun I have to make ten thousand dollars and have it saved before I spend any money on on you know going to a concert or, or event or whatever and it's like this this mentality is gonna kind of get this person heartbroken it's like they're trying to they're really trying to be perfect for you because they see that there's a possible third party that's going to come in that might be competition so they want to make sure when they come forward, they have a lot to offer that they have, um, you know, something stable to offer. But I don't think they realize it's like you don't it's like they have you on a pedestal, but you don't you just you just all you really want is for them to be genuine. You know, like you love them as they are. Like if you you know, I mean, I'm sure you're fed up with this. I'm sure a lot of you are like, I'm, you know, about done. Like you are opening to new people because you feel like this other person's never going to treat you right. Like they're never going to get their shit together. But, but I feel like, I feel like this person, it's, it's like, it's like when I tune into their energy, it's like, yeah, they're like, they're trying to be perfect for you because they know that there's this competition that's coming in. Um, but I don't think it's like, they need to recognize that you're not actually wanting them to be perfect. You're wanting to be treated well. You're wanting someone that's going to be like a king of cups or queen of cups or emperor or empress type. You're wanting someone that's going to 
be emotionally available, emotionally consistent, somebody that's going to message you every day, somebody that's going to travel with you, somebody that's going to not play games with you, somebody that's going to be honest about their feelings, somebody that's going to be open with you, somebody that's really just going to, you know, live their life with you, that's going to want to see you on a regular basis, you know, no games, no excuses, none of that, just just a real solid relationship. That's what you're looking for. But this person is like trying to figure out who this person is, um, whether they've come in not or yet, or whether they've come in yet or not. This person's trying to like, instead of just giving you this authenticity and this vulnerability and this honesty, it's like they're trying to find loopholes to not have to give you that that honesty and vulnerability. And honest, to be honest, I feel like this person deep down, I feel like they know that's what you want. I feel like they know that all that you really want is is just them, is just them to be emotionally available, um, consistent with you, um, you know, messaging you regularly, going places with you, taking you places, just really, you know, having a life with you, um, really expressing their emotions to you. And it's almost like they're trying to find loopholes to do anything but that. It's like they're trying to find a way to win you back and compete with this possible third party without having to express emotions, without having to offer commitment, without having to to bear their soul and, and take that leap of faith. It's like they know deep down they need to take a leap of faith. They know deep down that, that this relationship is, there. there's no loopholes. It's going to require emotional availability. It's going to require vulnerability on both ends. Deep down, they do know that's what you're looking for. But yeah, they're trying to find, it's like they're fighting that. And their intuition is telling them that. Their intuition is coming in with that information. Their spirit guides are letting them know that you are looking for emotional depth, for vulnerability, for, you know, just no games, no no, no mind games, no, no delays, none of that. Um, but yeah, it's kind of like they're fighting that. They're kind of arguing with their spirit guides. They're like, they're feeling that n nudge. And then they're like, okay, well, I'm going to go perfect myself at... Um, at work, I'm going to, I'm going to make more money. And so I can take them someplace special, or I can take them on a vacation, or I'm going to, um, you know, I'm going to try to find out what this guy, you know, if, 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 if for some of you might be already dating somebody, so they're going to be like, I'm going to try to find out what this guy has that I don't. And I'm going to try to, you know, possess those qualities to one up him. Like if he looks really good at the gym, I'm going to, I'm going to go to the gym more so I can, I can look like that too. Or if he has a nice car, I want to, I want to get a better car too. Or if he has, you know, um, it's like, it's like, they're not seeing that this person isn't really their competition. They, they're, they're their competition. They're their own worst enemy. They are, they are what's blocking them from you. It's not this new person. It's, it's their own unwillingness to be vulnerable. Tell me more about this. Yeah, I'm like just looking at it and I feel like there's so, because Wheel of Fortune is like karma and then the devil energy is like sabotage and the things that hold us back, like negative thinking, like negative patterns, that kind of thing. The emperor, and then we have the nine of swords, someone having anxiety and sleepless nights. Somebody's having anxiety because they know that this queen of swords is manifesting an emperor or, you know, empress type, male or female, take it as it resonates. Or it could be two men or two women here. Just, you know, take it as there's no there's no applied gender to my readings. Just take it how it how it resonates. But um, yeah, it, it feels like they're having a lot of anxiety and just, they're not realizing this person isn't their threat. I mean, this person, it's like this emperor that you're manifesting, it's like they're emotionally available. They're open. They they know what they want. They know that they want you. They're sure about you. And it's like, I think this person really needs to change their perspective because it's like, they're so worried about this person coming in. But honestly, if it wasn't this person, it would be someone new because you're, you're opening yourself up to someone that's going to love you properly. Somebody that's going to want to be with you. Somebody that's not going to be on the fence about you. Somebody that's not going to have like a take it or leave it. Oh, I'll, I'll see you whenever I'm bored and lonely kind of attitude. Somebody that, you know, is all about you. Like they're attentive. They, they want it when they're in the room with you, when you guys are at a show together, when you're at a 
movie, wherever, it's like they're they're there with you. You can tell from their energy that they don't want to be there with anybody else but you. Like that's the kind of energy you're looking for. You're looking for mutual love, mutual loyalty, mutual support. Um, so this person's like not recognizing that, you know, they could step up at any time and offer you that. And you'd probably even be open to that. You'd probably even hear them out. But instead of recognizing that, it's like they're just seeing this this other person as like a threat, as like, you know, like this third party is like out, you know, like they're, like they're just so focused on this third party and not on making these changes themselves. Hmm. Because it's like they're asking themselves, like, what does this person have that I don't have? What can they offer this queen or king of swords that I can't? Like, what, what's the, what, like, they're competing. It's like an insecurity, like, like trying to one up this person. But it's like, what they have that this other person doesn't have is emotional availability. That's it. It's, it's that simple. This, this queen or king of swords isn't looking for the world. They're not, you know, you're, you're not looking for someone to be perfect. You're looking for someone to love you and to be emotionally available and, and spend time with you and, and be consistent with you and show you that, you know, travel with you, show you that, that you're important to them. Five of Pentacles, the Hermit, Six of Wands. Some of them are really in this mentality Of like, let's see. Some of them are really trying to perfect themselves financially. They, again, it's like they're trying to find loopholes. They're trying to find any excuse to, to not have to better themselves, to not have to. It's like they're looking outside themselves. You know what I mean? It's like they're they're still they they're still they're almost they're getting there though. It's it's like they're finally taking the steps, and you know healing isn't a linear process. It's up and down. It's it's you know it's it's not just like an instant thing. So it's like it's like I said, it's a really good sign that they've they're they're distancing themselves from toxic people. They're not getting in their head about toxic people's opinions about the relationship or about them anymore. They are listening to themselves. So that's a good thing. But but again, there's that final block of, you know, ego versus soul where they they need to they, they need to start learning how to listen to their spirit guides and listening to their soul. And I feel like they do kind of hear their spirit guides a little bit, but I feel like they fight it because they don't they don't want to hear it when their spirit guides come through when they're like, hey, all your person really wants is you to express your emotions and be vulnerable and and show them how you feel and, and that they're important to you and, and travel with them and be with them. They don't want to hear that. They want, you know what I mean? Like they, like they, part of them hears it. Part of the, some small part of them knows that's their intuition coming through, but they don't want to hear it. They, they, they want a loophole. They want an easier path. So they're like, that couldn't possibly be it. It must be, you know, it must be this other person that they're manifesting. I have to find out what this this other uh, emperor, empress, this person that they're they're manifesting this new love. I got to find out what's going on with them. I got to find out how I can be physically better than them, mentally better than them, emotionally better than them, spiritually better than them. I got to figure out what they have that I don't. I gotta I gotta one up this other person, and they're they're not. It's like a. It's like they're still running in a way. You know what I mean? They're they're trying to do anything to avoid vulnerability for some they're also seeing as as work for some it's like you don't really care that much about money like yeah money is a good bonus don't get me wrong um but I feel like as long as a man or woman like has their own money like they're paying for themselves when you guys go out they're not asking you to pay for them you know I feel like as long as they have their own money you're not you're not looking for somebody that's rich but for some, and for some of you, you might be dating someone new that is rich. And so they're, this person's trying to, um, like they're trying to, they're trying to get more money so that they can, they feel like that's going to impress you. If they, if they get more money, like this new person has, they're going to be like, oh, I can, then I can offer them this for others. It's like, you might not even be dating anybody new, but it's like, they're, um, like it might not have anything to do with like a rich new person or anything like that, but they might just be feeling like, 
like their finances aren't doing well or like work's not doing well. And they're, again, just looking at outside outside sources. And the answer is simple. They're driving themselves crazy. They're going around in circles. The answer is simple. It's vulnerability. It's consistency. That is what you want. Vulnerability and consistency, open emotional expression, physical affection, like all those things. Things that everyone would want in a relationship, just common sense things is what you're wanting. But yeah, some of them are like looking at their finances. They're getting in their head about it. They're like, well... If I can just, if it, it again, like perfectionism is a form of self sabotage. They're kind of in this mentality of like, oh, if I can just save this amount of money or make this amount of money or get this promotion or find this new job, um, then, you know, it's, it's like always pushing it out. It's like always kind of protecting themselves. Like once I do that, oh, then I'll come forward. Like once everything in my life is perfect, then I'll come forward. Some of them think that they're going to impress you with money. Some of them think they're going to save some money and take you someplace nice and you're not you're not going to be impressed with their money. You're just not. If they're still not being vulnerable, the money isn't going to cut it for you. It's not um you guys could even have different love languages too. That could be part of it as you might your love language might be more like emotional and like physical intimacy and like words of affirmation and like closeness or this person's love language might be more like acts of service and that kind of thing. So, I mean, I think you would appreciate it too. Don't get me wrong. Like if they took you like traveling or they took you somewhere nice, like I think you would really appreciate it. Like I think it would be a turn on for you, but it's not a substitute for a lack of, of vulnerability and emotional expression. You're going to be like, wow, this was amazing. Like, thank you for taking me to this on this vacation or to this nice restaurant or whatever. Like I, it means a lot to me. Like, wow, you really stepped up, but how do you feel about me now? Like I still, I still need that I still want to know how you feel. I still want, I still want consistency. That's the money is not going to cut it for me, you know, but yeah, some of them are really focused on finances thinking that's going to be the, the, the key to victory. And it's just, it's, it's not, it's not going to cut it. There's no loopholes. It's, it's, it, there's going to have to be vulnerability or it's just not going to happen. Anyway, I hope this resonates with you guys. Thank you for watching. And please, um, if this resonates, please subscribe to, I'm going to do these readings, you know, I do these readings regularly. Uh, I appreciate your comments, even just leaving a heart comment below. It really helps me. Thanks.